production possibility curve. In economics, a production possibility curve is also called a production possibility frontier, production possibility boundary or product transformation curve is a graph that compares the production rates of two commodities that use the same fixed total of the factors of production. Graphically bounding the production set, the PPF curve shows the maximum specified production level of one commodity that results given the production level of the other. By doing so, it defines productive efficiency in the context of that production set. Let us consider the shape and use of the production possibility curve. In our discussion we make the following assumptions. Number 1, only two goods, X and Y, are being produced. Number 2, only one factor of production is used in the production. That factor of production is labor. The supply of labor in the economy is fixed and total amount of labor is fully employed. Number 3, the two goods can be produced in various ratios. This means that the country can produce more of X and less of Y or less X and more of Y. Number 4, in the production of both goods, law of increasing cost operates. This means that if the production of one good rises, its marginal cost will rise. Number 5, there is no change in production process or production technology. With the help of these assumptions we can explain how the production possibility curve can be obtained. Suppose the country can produce different alternative combinations of X and Y with its given amount of labor. Those combinations are shown with the help of the following hypothetical schedule. When the country doesn't produce any X then it can use all its resources to produce Y. So Y is 10. Now, if the country starts to produce the XP1 unit, that will decrease the production of Y to 9. When X is 2, the production of Y will decrease to 7. Like this when X is 3, Y is 4. And, at the last stage when they use their all resource to produce 4 units of X, they can't produce any unit of Y. From this schedule, we see that if the country produces only Y and no amount of good X, then it can produce a maximum of 10 units of Y. So, we get a combination of 0 and 10 on the production possibility curve. Again, if the country does not produce good Y and devote its entire resources in the production of X, then it can produce a maximum of 4 units of X. Hence, 0.4 and 0 will be a combination of 2 goods on the production possibility curve. In this way, employing the entire resource, labor, the country can produce 1 unit of good X and 9 units of good Y, or 2 units of good X and 7 units of good Y. In our figure, we plot the amount of good X on the horizontal axis and the amount of good Y on the vertical axis. In this figure, AE is the production possibility curve. With the given amount of labor, the country can produce any product combination on the production possibility curve. This curve is downward sloping. It implies that, given the amount of labor, if the country increases the production of one good, it must reduce the production of the other. The country can produce any combination below AE curve but it cannot produce any combination lying to the right of AE. Let F be a point to the left of AE. At this point, some amount of labor will remain unutilized. By full employment of labor, the country can move from F to any point on AE where the production of at least one commodity will increase. Again, if it is found that there is full employment of labor but output is obtained as represented by F, then it should be understood that production has not been done efficiently. In that case, it is possible to increase the production of both goods by efficient utilization of labor. If the given amount of labor is fully utilized, the country can produce any combination of X and Y on AE curve. Hence, to determine the production levels of two goods means to determine the point on the production possibility curve, at which the country will stay.